Now that you're working simultaneously on features for the big screen and series for the OTT platforms, have you adapted your craft to the various demands of the different platforms? How exciting and challenging is this new wave in the sphere of storytelling? It's a great new phase of uh, learning and unlearning. In the last year, I've worked on a couple of theatrical features, a feature meant specifically for OTT as well as a couple of uh, series for OTT platforms. Now, features for OTT are a great new format since there's no interval. So as an editor, it's definitely an advantage since you're looking at uh, the entire edit in one flow as opposed to a fragmented first half and second half. On the flip side, the Indian audiences are accustomed to taking a break after the first hour of the film, but on OTT, they're not going to get that. And you definitely don't want them to lose interest. And you also want them to commit their full attention for the entire duration of the film. Uh, the OTT audience is obviously not a captive audience, so if they feel the tedium of the film at any point, they are likely to switch out and move to the next available option on the platform. Uh, therefore, you also have to be more mindful of the pacing and structure of the film. So the brief for an OTT film edit is actually super specific and we are asked to ensure that viewers find points of interest at the 2nd, 6th, 7th and 15th minute. Um, another challenge with ODT is that the turnaround time for edits is much faster. Uh, we are used to editing for uh, six to eight months almost for theatrical feature films. And um, we make multiple versions like a first cut, editor's cut, director's cut, a producer's cut, a studio cut, and not to mention, of course, the sundry intermediate cuts that are a combination of two or more of these cuts. Uh, but with OTT, our major milestones become the network cuts, typically about, I'd say, three to five network cuts that have to be sent across to the platform. Uh, it's usually a very short turnaround time between the day you stop shooting until we deliver what we call the first network cut. And the entire workflow is very scheduled and very strictly monitored with supervisors ensuring you are not late for the delivery even by a day. Uh, so the edit process gets a lot more structured, which I actually rather enjoy, though it does take time to adjust to the speed at which work happens. Mm, with web series specifically, the big challenge as an editor is to draw in your audience uh, within the first few minutes of the first episode itself, and also build the end of each episode to a tense cliffhanger moment, because these are the two key factors which keep the audience hooked, and they end up uh, binge watching the season. Uh, within a web series, although I feel very strongly about one issue, and that is that we're still writing web series the way we write films. So the setup invariably takes the first four to five episodes, which is half the season, uh, while the payoff happens in the last four or five episodes. As a result, the story just feels like it's constantly on a slow cook, and uh, the audience is likely to lose interest after you know, just the first two episodes. So for an editor, it becomes a big challenge to reach the meat of the story faster. And then we end up restructuring, we end up poaching scenes between episodes and essentially pulling out every trick in the book to make the audience um, stay hooked to the series. Uh, another thing I had to get accustomed to was that some OTT platforms hire three different editors for the same show and they divide episodes by three with each editor typically working on at least two alternate uh, episodes. So you have to work towards uh, unifying the approach to the edit, otherwise the series will end up looking patchy. Uh, and there are also some OTT platforms which still prefer the traditional way of cutting with one editor working on all the episodes. Uh, I think both methods have their own set of challenges. Uh, with the solo editor system especially, I feel you're put into a room with approximately, I'd say, 1,200 minutes of footage if you have a standard uh, 1 is to 4 shooting ratio, uh, out of which you have to carve out 10 episodes of 30 minutes each uh, within three months. It's like almost like working on two feature films, but in almost uh, half the time that it takes to edit one uh, feature film. So the pressure is obviously immense and once the network cuts start going out, you're likely to end up in a situation where you're cutting one episode even as you make platform uh, recommended changes on another episode. 
so the process is very very intensive but it keeps you on your toes and i have to say i enjoy that challenge like i said earlier for me for me working on uh, a feature film as well as uh, uh, working on an ad or even working on a short film uh, for me it's it's the same the thing is um, i at times i work uh, in my office on on this system at times i work on a laptop in a coffee shop uh, at times i sit in my house on the laptop so for me it's the same uh, the uh, the only thing is uh, what i feel is like you know it's just 3 days of shoot you know if it's a short film uh, or it's just 3 or 4 days of shoot and then it gets over at that in 25 minutes the film is over and uh, your edit process takes a day or so a day or a day and a half so that's the only difference but uh, when you talk about a feature film you know you got so much to do so much rushes to go through and uh, it's huge that's the only difference i see in in uh, in the uh, on the ott platforms as well as on screen so it's still the same it's still storytelling so yeah it's just the same so personally i it hasn't changed much for me it is like in terms of like working on a feature because thankfully whatever directors i have worked with in ott also they have been a feature film directors at uh, they have been feature film directors also and they have been making feature films on the side so it's more like the balancing of things in terms of there's a much more stringent deadline which works in a sort of a ott platform which is not there in which is there in features but it's very different you have much more like a time scope kind of a thing because here the episode is short and you are supposed to deliver the episode with like a certain platform you have to deliver the episode within the next two weeks and that one hour of chunk and sometimes the director will spend very little time with you end up spending little time with you uh, compared to like a feature film where you sort of work extensively together and have go through different process where you sort of show the film uh, to different people and then you go through one to another process but uh, otherwise i feel the edit purely is very similar of course you work on the basic the technical uh, thought process is slightly just different like you are working on a one hour episode so you work on a working on building on that cliffhanger moment very strong because you know you want to build on that cliffhanger for the next episode to be watched and for people to search quickly go on to the next episode so those kind of things which is pretty much like how you will build up your interval in our in our kind of scenario uh how exciting and challenging it is very exciting for me because one thing is good about this platform uh, the ott platform is it is opening up a lot more uh, ideas and you have of course there's a lot of people making stuff and so there's a quality the scripts are not reaching at a certain stage sometimes and they are going to be shot much before they are ready mature enough to be shot but uh, still saying that their narratives which are coming out are like like even if you look at it like through the course of the year if you have like those 10 good stuff that comes out that itself is like a setting up a good ground for things to go on from there because at least these are becoming like some sort of a benchmark for people to follow and then it sort of people are striving to make that good stuff what they are watching like when the international stuff and rest of the other stuff that is for me always uh, editing is my second stage of writing so uh, uh, i always write uh, for my edit uh, and i think it uh, that way and uh, All, and, and I always shoot for my edit. So the thing is, uh, uh, there are no other optional edits. So I, I, I go with one edit. So uh, the the thing is, uh, so so when the uh, when the first draft itself, uh, there is a kind of a a format which is actually forming up, shaping up, in terms of uh, you know uh, who are who are going to watch this film. So uh, how are they going to? Uh, get intrigued into the story, or, or uh, whether whether the plot points are all working for them, or where is the inciting incident. So these kind of thoughts always function within myself. So uh, so when you when you go uh, from a big from a uh, from a theatrical feature film thing to a a series or, or an original film for an OTT platform. So I think I always think that uh, uh, this the the whole language of this uh, 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 inciting incident happening at the at this particular stage 
uh, this uh, the plot point switching from this stage to this stage so uh, all these norms are going to get changed so i i think i'm getting i'm going to get a lot of freedom where you know where I, where i can uh, i can start the story uh, without uh, much uh, uh, you know uh, exposition of my characters uh, or or even i can start the, uh, the 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 conflict right away so you know uh, I, I, that, that that's the kind of freedom what we are expecting from uh, what i am expecting from uh, these kind of digital platforms uh, at times people can actually uh, pause Uh, and and I'm I'm thinking it as like thinking it like that. I can that that's an interactive button what they have. They have this remote, so they can pause it. They can like oh, what was that? They they can go back, and then they then they will think about it. Then they will come back. So I, I'm I'm happy that I have that option. So uh, I I think that's a big that that's going to be a bigger bigger advantage. How do you like to edit a film alone, or with the presence of the director? or you allow your assistant to do a rough assembling of the rushes and then you sit on it i would like to uh, edit all alone and i prefer the director joining me afterwards for a discussion but uh, uh, some directors want to sit behind me while i am editing and when they ask me uh, when do they come tomorrow uh, i tell them that i get this uh, mood of editing early in the morning around 5 o'clock and uh, uh then they are like uh, oh okay so you carry on and uh, we will join you around 10 am uh, i would like to do it myself uh, rather than my assistant because uh, i look at uh, this assembly as a foundation for a better cut and uh, i take quite quite a few uh, important decisions uh, regarding the structure and uh, i am also afraid that i would be Uh, missing out on some magical moments captured by the director i usually like to edit the film alone preferably but of course i mean uh, if the director wants to sit and be there and watch i'm okay with it but if you ask my preference i like to do it alone because i think i really think better when i'm alone and um, I I like to bounce the sequences almost every day like every evening after I'm finished with a certain chunk I would like to show it to someone um my assistant or uh, the director or anyone who is willing to watch and give me feedback on it and also watching it with someone once I have finished the whole process and I watch it with someone I watch it with their eyes so that suddenly makes me really objective otherwise i have to wait for the next day you know i finish something in the evening when i watch it the next day i i think i am decently objective so um that is one then editing i like to watch all the rushes myself i don't know i mean i really enjoy it because uh, every time at any stage of the edit if i'm stuck the only answer i have is to go back to the rushes so if i know them well it it it's good um i am learning to let go and let my assistants also do certain scenes or help me with uh, you know support me but i still like to do it because i don't know i really enjoy the process of looking at the rushes of creating performances of creating the geography and seeing everything in less you know i mean i like to do that but yeah i'm also learning to let go How does the advent of computer graphics influence or help you in editing a film? Has it become an advantage or disadvantage for the editor? I think uh, they do play a major role in, in any film. For example, films that have like which are mainly on computer graphics, like Robo and and then and and, and uh, the others uh, is yes, that's one side. That's that's completely. Uh, a cg kind of a film uh but other films uh, the, that have uh, graphics in it not uh, it, it, it's positive it's it's plus in a way but it's also you know if 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 someone is shooting it and they think oh this is not good i don't worry we'll do it in cg so that kind of attitude has come into uh, the industry where people you know Uh, immediately rely on cg and think okay let's do it then my thing about cg graphics is yes graphics is required but it should be used only at the right place uh, 
and only uh, when it is not seen, when you don't see the, when you don't realize its graphics, you know, that's where uh, it is a plus for me. Uh, that's what I think. But otherwise, for any listing at all, you know, other, let's do it in CG, let's do it in CG. That kind of attitude I don't think should be there. And uh, that's how I see uh, computer graphics in a, uh, in relation to our editing. So I haven't yet interacted massively with a film uh, uh, like I haven't interacted with a project where I where it has like insane amount of like VFX or insane amount of computer graphics I'm still I whatever I've interacted with it's been more in terms of a very realistic zone but even in the places where the VFX is done it's not like too much it's like it's still not like something like a uh, on a big scale scope kind of a thing where all that the all the footage that I'm getting is mostly shot in chroma or uh, everything has to be put in VFX plates and everything has to come together it's for me it has been largely involved in a that you have already a certain frame that is set and there's a chroma that is developed so you kind of create the depth so it hasn't hampered my sort of process in any way um, I'm yet to work on a project which is like uh, which is like massively VFX oriented just to see what goes into it but of course like I know the process will be very laborious as a uh, just the whole process of it and uh, but like till I don't work, I am not very sure as to what to look forward to. Apart from the time that, apart from the that basic idea, it will take a lot of time just to go through the basic process. Uh, I don't think it is advantage or disadvantage. Like I feel like if the story needs it, it is an advantage, and it is always up to the story. The story is bigger than all of us, and that's how I look at the film. Like it's bigger than any other ego and everything so the you just have to work towards building your story so if the story needs like a certain vfx or certain uh, thing to done to make it feel like you are living in that world or you feel part of that world then it is important if the story doesn't feel that then i feel key and you are just forcing it down then it, then of course it's a disadvantage but otherwise i feel it's pretty much like a very important tool especially when you see like people like david fincher and all uh david fincher like uh alfonso quran all of these guys when the kind of stuff they shoot like and how they utilize vfx to elevate the experience and a lot of people like these are the obviously just two names that i've said a lot of people who are using the vfx in such intricate manner where they are using uvfx is almost blending the reality with vfx where you can't even figure things that's the beauty of it that's that's what makes it like the idea of vfx for me is amazing i think in the coming years uh, vfx department is going to play a major role in uh, setting up new standards for all our films uh, it's because uh, uh, i think uh, uh, even even before shooting even before uh, we plan a production like a lot of pre-visualization happens uh, uh, in, in, in that department and which, which eventually saves a lot of money. And uh, also uh, for, for cinematographers, uh, you know, they can uh, uh, go to an to, uh, endless number of extents where you know, they, they, they can imagine things uh, with, with much uh, lesser budget. So that is another advantage. Uh, for me personally, uh, uh, when I'm uh, when I'm when, when I when I'm even, when I'm editing uh, or or when I'm directing, uh, I felt that you know good VFX uh, guys uh, are, are are really as creative as storytellers because they understand the story well. So picking up the the real uh, VFX artist is the most important thing. That's the that's the most difficult task. What I have uh, faced the entire uh, th th I mean the, um, th throughout my career. It, it is because uh, um, uh, you know uh, finding the right person who has the who has uh, 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 the kind of sensibility which actually matches with the director, with the cinematographer, with the editor, and even with the sound designer uh, is very much important uh, because they are also creative artists. <coughs> so, uh, what is good good VFX is, is is a kind of a definition which uh, we all need to understand. Where uh, uh, you know. Uh, a good VFX is like is always a, like always uh, very much hidden, which which you know which which we can't actually find out. Okay, okay, was this VFX? Okay, 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 I didn't get it. 
that's a that's the thing which uh, which where, where we are heading to so uh, uh, like uh, if you look at my uh, uh, for, uh, my experience like uh, take off uh, the film which i have directed uh, 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 was was entirely uh, made with a with a with a, with a shooting budget so uh, i i need to rely a lot on these vfx department so uh, you know, i i couldn't afford the whole entire crew to travel to a, a place like iraq uh, and and shoot those those things so i had to literally put a set in kerala so the the entire um, terrain background and everything that 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 we we are always briefing to people and saying that okay this is the kind of temperature uh, you are living in and this is the kind of temperature which where, where it's outside so the uh, the light is going to fall from here so those kind of explanations are given to all the people and within that uh, idea uh, when an artist i mean when a vfx artist uh, improvises his his uh, sort of work that's kind of pure magic which is which is we uh, which which we going to attain on screen so uh that is the level of expectation what we are all looking forward to like, like see witness uh, or or experience i feel computer graphics as a visual element in films has definitely been an advantage for us uh, especially now that we show the use of electronic devices extensively in every film or series uh, phones computers laptops etc Uh, when used cleverly, they are a great illustrative element. I feel, as we have uh, seen in the BBC series Sherlock Holmes, or for that matter, even in Shakuntala Devi during her number crunching scenes, or even for more short plays when the characters are typing messages, blogs, etc. Uh, the disadvantage is that at an offline level, this does get time consuming to execute, especially since one wants these graphics to be timed as per the edit. Uh, and one has to also give a visual reference to the VFX studio for them to replicate. Uh, so the process of adding in these elements sometimes ends up taking longer than even editing the scenes. Uh, the alternative is to get the graphics done by the studio, but invariably in our industry we are waiting till the last moment to send uh, scenes to visual effects. So by the time they work on the effects and send them back to the edit, it's invariably too late to. open up the edit and readjust the timing of the shots so if we do decide to uh, use cg i prefer to do the graphics timing myself and send a reference to the studio what is your approach in making a trailer and what are the important factors to make a successful trailer um yeah the trailer trailer or a teaser i would say is one of the most important factors in a film uh, for a film any film because that's what creates the first opinion of the audience towards that film uh, and basically my approach would be to uh, take out the interesting bits and tell the story in a linear manner uh, which uh, would actually lead to the final uh, product itself so you uh, kind of preset the audience uh, mindset and tell them what it is that they are going to experience in the movie what it is where they are going to watch uh, what are they paying uh, their money for that would be my first approach so the second thing uh, if it's a big hero film uh, the content uh, should be uh, anchored towards the fan ex- fans expectation and uh, also the business expectations of the film itself so uh, these three uh, combined together along with uh, you know I recently as watched one of your interviews which I completely agree with uh, not to reveal uh, anything in the trailer or teaser from the third act probably could use few shots or uh, um, you know uh, some uh, stunt sequences but not exactly the uh, plot point wise uh, the uh, plot wise nothing to be revealed from the third act I completely agree with that i would definitely say that is important uh, so that's that's one of the major things that i would look out for and also it, it needs to be exciting it needs to be exciting for the buyers for the uh, 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 distributors for the producers and also for the audience themselves i consider film trailers a stand alone marketing tool of a feature film uh, basic idea of any trailer is to excite the audience and create curiosity in the minds of people with a short short duration of time normally the the time duration uh, of a trailer will be from 1 minute to max 3 minutes uh if i am i uh, when i approach editing a film trailer uh in a way like uh, if i am editing a trailer i choose all the exciting element elements from the film and put it in a timeline 
then create uh, separate timelines for each emotions, uh, different emotions. There will be a sequence of nice dialogue portions, emotional scenes, comedy scenes, action pieces, shots which showcases the production value of the film, etc. Uh, this process really helps me a lot while I actually start putting together the trailer. So I don't need to go back to the like the, the main timeline every time. So I can just go to the, the timeline I had created and I have created and then go to it and choose whatever I need. But initially the, the duration of this timeline will be long, like maybe 30 to 45 minutes. So from that I'll pick up whatever I need to make the trailer. But one serious advice is when you're making a trailer, do not make your trailer like a small version of your film. There are lots of film trailers in YouTube which gives up the entire storyline in two or three minutes. Uh, that's really like uh, suicidal. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, your job as a trailer editor is to excite people and then then leave them wanting wanting to watch the film uh, without giving too much inputs of the storyline. Well, I thought I'll also share a few thoughts about trailer because it's come a long way since. Uh, history of films, how the trailer has also evolved. It's evolved in such a way that uh, initially trailers were made in such a way that it intrigues the audience, gets you into liking the concept and then uh, hiding most of the facts of the film and only letting out a few uh, points which will interest the audience to come into the theatre. This is how always trailers have started off initially and that is how uh, we were also making when we started our careers and things. But later slowly I think the concept of trailer has changed because uh, not only because of the concept of trailer but, but because uh, the window for the uh, box office window changed in the sense that a film in olden days used to run for 100 days or 10 weeks, 15 weeks like that and then the, um, with more number of theatres release and stuff like that, it became a very short window, which is like to, for two days, the opening weekend and maybe a 10 day window. So now to get all the audience in so many theatres, there was no time to wait. So the Hollywood slowly changed to make in such a way that they made trailers which revealed everything and uh, show everything that you have in the film to pull the audience to come you know all the big shots and all that before we never used to do that because we always thought something has to be left to the theater even now i believe that is what so when i make trailers i do let in uh, the audience on the subject and the sort of film it's going to be so that they don't get disappointed even in the stop small time frame but we don't re reveal the whole thing. I mean, I wouldn't reveal the even the third act uh, to get them into the theatre, you know, because there is something you want them to see inside the theatre, you know, you experience. And that's what we want and that's what we want the audience to. But it's become much more open over the years because you want to show showcase your whole uh, grandeur and actors and stuff like that so that you pull them into the audience and the opening weekend becomes... A, so this is the way the trailer has changed over a period. Thank you so much viewers. Uh, I hope uh, I'm not asking you to take everything what I told you. Just take bits and pieces, the nice pieces and you know uh, work on your own talent uh, and uh, do well as an editor. I'm so glad that this session happened because it brought all the editing colleagues of mine under one platform it is very difficult to meet <laughs> them otherwise everybody is working in different places and they are busy with their work so all come together and trying to talk about editing and how they are reacting to certain questions I am sure it is be a big boon to the uh, uh, editing students who would love to watch it and uh, absorb the good parts of it.